Hello, and thanks for watching. My name is Alex Kirk. I'm a global principal engineer with Corelight. Today, I'm going to use real world customer data from the recent SolarWinds compromise to show you the value of having the right security information in the right place at the right time. For those of you who've never heard of Corelight, let me briefly explain why these customers have chosen us in the first place. As many of you know firsthand, the traditional way of getting security data into your SIM is messy at best. You have to continuously pull logs from a variety of different systems, app servers, security devices, endpoints, and hope that none of them got missed or gets tampered with, either by a bad actor covering their tracks or just a sysadmin trying to save CPU. Some of the logs are missing vital information. For example, DNS logs that lack response data, the very channel that the SolarWinds attackers use for first stage communications. And of course, none of these logs are natively linked, so something as mundane as timestamp skew can make them awful to search through. Deploying core light devices let them avoid that mess for all things network. Our appliances passively monitor their full layer seven traffic streams and create a comprehensive set of security oriented logs that not only contain all the detail that their security teams need, but also come in a standardized format with standardized timestamps and a unique identifier appended to make pivoting between data sets easy. Using Corelight as their sole source of network truth lets them save time on administration and investigation while getting better results than before. But instead of me telling you about this, let me show it to you in action. First, we're gonna look at a data set where the customer sent us raw logs, which we've loaded up in Splunk for ESO analysis. For those who don't know Corelight, we're designed to feed into your SIM versus being another console to swivel into. And Splunk is the leading SIM our customers are sending data to. We're starting with a search for the domain at the heart of the Sunburst C2 structure, exactly like this customer did as the news broke back in December. And right off the bat, we can see which hosts sent these queries and thus which systems are in scope for the investigation. We can also see that some of these DNS queries went to abnormal servers. For example, this first one here actually lives in AWS. Rogue DNS is something every organization should be monitoring for because it's an easy way to find all sorts of bad behavior on your network. As we dig further into these queries and the replies that they received, you can't help but notice this weird unknown type equals 43 record. Drilling down in, we see that this is an obscure DNS record. In normal use, it's the delegation signer record for DNS set keys with delegated zones. What's more likely is that this is a feature of the C2 channel that the research community has yet to unravel, since none of the public breakdowns to date mention it at all. The beauty of having it recorded like this, though, is that if someone does figure out what it means, which is quite possible given how much research is continuing to be published on this topic, they have the data to apply that new knowledge backwards in time and retrospectively update this, their security posture as needs be. Now, this particular customer got lucky and the story ends there, with them all going home in time for the holidays, because all their queries were eventually answered with kill switches, and there were none of the second stage indicators anywhere in their logs. The second customer I wanted to talk about today wasn't willing to share logs directly, but is a participant in a program that lets our research team inspect their traffic to validate detections, test performance, and otherwise improve the product. So when this all broke, the leader of our research team's rapid response group eagerly dug in, starting with the question a whole ton of enterprises had to ask themselves, is there even an impacted SolarWinds device on this network? Thankfully, those systems are friendly and announce themselves via user agent strings, so it was actually very easy to find them. Now, since pivoting on the unique identifier we lay down gives you all related logs for a given session, he immediately did so and quickly found some associated SSL sessions. It turns out this customer had an SSL proxy that all devices went through, and so a single TCP connection contained a plain text HTTP connect request with the identifying user agent and an SSL certificate that we could parse to find the name of the server being connected to. A simple join then produced a list that looks kind of boring here due to the customer's request for redaction, but made malicious connections stand out like a sore thumb, both in this environment and with other customers who later confirmed they'd used this exact technique in their investigations. Of course, if you already know where your critical infrastructure devices are, it's easy to apply this same logic of looking for anomalous SSL server connections, even without plain text packets being present by looking directly at what's logged from those devices certificate exchanges. That means it's easy to do this sort of hunting even in the future, which makes it harder for even advanced attackers to hide on your network.